Hi, I'm Mark Jacobson. I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Stanford University. And I develop energy plans for states and countries and cities and towns to transition these entities to 100% clean and renewable energy for all purposes. That's electricity, transportation, heating and cooling, industry, agriculture, forestry, and fishing. So we've been developing these plans for the past 10 years. And we've developed a plan for Taiwan, as well as 139 countries of the world. And basically, the Taiwan plan calls for electrification of all energy sectors. Uh, so for example, for transportation, we'd use electric cars, uh, trucks, trains, uh, even planes can be short haul planes can be electric. Also hydrogen fuel cell for long distance planes, uh, long distance trucks. Uh, so a combination of electric and hydrogen fuel cell for transportation, for heating, for home and business and commercial building heat and cold, we'd use heat pumps, uh, which move heat rather than create heat. And also for air conditioning, we'd use heat pumps. And for industry, we'd use existing high temperature electric uh, devices such as arc furnaces, dielectric heaters, and induction furnaces. And then we'd provide all the electricity for all, the, all those sectors, plus the electric power sector, with just wind, water, and solar. That's onshore and offshore wind, solar photovoltaics on rooftops and in power plants, concentrated solar power, uh, hydroelectric power, geothermal power, and tidal and wave power. So we'd not, we would not need nuclear power, coal, oil, or, and gas for any purpose, even with carbon capture and sequestration. And we would not even need biofuels. Everything could be run with just wind, water, and solar. The benefits of this transition are enormous. We would reduce power demand by more than 50% just by going to wind, water, solar. We get 23 percentage points reduction due to the efficiency of electricity over combustion. Another 13% reduction by eliminating the energy needed to mine, transport, and refine fossil fuels and uranium because wind comes right to the, pan to the turbine, solar comes right to the panel, so we don't need that energy. Then we can eliminate another 16% of energy due to the efficiency of heat pumps over gas heaters or even electric resistance heaters. So more than 50% reduction of power demand. That means that even if the cost of energy per unit energy is the same with a wind, water, solar, and fossil fuel system, you use half the energy in the wind, water, solar system, so the co cost to consumers is one half that of a fossil fuel system. That's the direct cost of energy. But we eliminate health and climate costs as well. These are called social costs. And these social costs are three times the health and climate costs. So in other words, if we go to, from a fossil fuel system to a wind, water, solar system, we reduce the social cost of energy per unit energy to one fourth the fossil fuel cost. And because we're using half the energy in the wind, water, solar system, the social cost is reduced to one eighth the cost of the fossil fuel system. So to summarize, the social cost of a wind, water, solar system is one eighth that of a fossil fuel system in terms of the total absolute amount of, of cost. And the direct energy cost is one half in terms of the direct, in terms of the actual cost to consumers. But the other benefits are jobs. We create, we found for Taiwan, we'd create over 200,000 more long-term full-time jobs than lost. We would reduce air pollution deaths significantly by over 10,000. We would eliminate the emissions associated with climate change from Taiwan. We would provide more energy security because we have with wind, water, solar, we have more distributed energy on rooftops, solar on rooftops, wind turbines that are spread apart rather than, rather than having centralized power plants. So if the grid goes down uh, with a wind, water, solar system, well, the grid won't go down. You can have individual turbines go down and you won't take the whole grid down, whereas centralized power plants can take, like coal plants or nuclear plants, if they go down, you know, a third of a city can go down in terms of its power. In addition, we don't have to import energy with wind, water, solar. All the energy is, is developed and is gathered in Taiwan and offshore. Instead of having to ship you know, oil and 
coal and gas from overseas. So we create jobs, we reduce the cost of energy, we reduce air pollution, reduce climate impacts, create more central, decentralized energy, providing more energy security, and we uh, have all the energy uh, grown in, at home. And so the net benefit is there's very little downside to such a transition. In fact, the, the main barriers are social and political, not technical or economic. So the key is to try to reduce those social and political barriers by educating the public about what's possible and by informing policymakers about what's possible and what's beneficial for the country of Taiwan.